I'm an F-16 fighter pilot. I was part of the first training group. You might be surprised to hear this, but the US hasn't handed over a single operational F-16 to Ukraine. Those came from European allies. What the US did provide were boneyard jets to keep Ukraine's F-16 fleet flying, and they trained this Ukrainian pilot. His name remains classified for security reasons. We studied new principles and new approaches to planning combat and reconnaissance missions. Meanwhile, specialists from the U.S. Air Force's 68th Electronic Warfare Squadron, who helped adapt the F-16 to Ukrainian conditions, had a big surprise in store for the Russians. It was a secret both Americans and Ukrainians kept locked down for months. We resolved the issue of information security from day one. Our unit is one of the most secure in Ukraine. Not even the Ministry of Defense or the General Staff has these kinds of security protocols. And clearly, it worked. The team from the 68th called this the best case in the squadron's history. So now it's time to give some credit to those brainy tech guys. And finally pull back the curtain. But let's start at the beginning. Our primary missions include aerial reconnaissance of enemy forces and positions, as well as electronic intelligence. Here's the thing though, the jets Ukraine got from European partners weren't ready for the constant cat and mouse game happening in the skies over Ukraine. They had to be reprogrammed to handle Russian threats. The main concern, ours and the media's, was the cabs Russia's been using. Cabs are a family of Russian-guided glide bombs. Death from above dropped dozens of kilometers from the front lines. The best way to stop them? Kill the launch platform. But there's a catch. We can't get close enough to take out the launch aircraft. Russian air defense crews aren't sleeping. They live to shoot down an F-16. But the Falcon's new EW capabilities caught them off guard. Right now, we're running complex operations to jam those bombs electronically. At first, the US military didn't acknowledge just how deeply involved they were in boosting Ukraine's F-16s. But now we know. The 68th Electronic Warfare of the US Air Force led the effort to upgrade the jet's EW systems. And it wasn't easy. American specialists first had to study an unfamiliar EW system. Then they had to optimize and adapt a few unique innovations to work inside Ukrainian F-16s. Believe it or not, they pulled it off in just two weeks. That's like learning Chinese in two weeks. So yeah, the brainy guys who pulled this off deserve a like. Let's get this video into their algorithm feed. Hey, you did one hell of a job, guys. Of course, reconnaissance and EW are just part of what the F-16 does in Ukraine. Mission 2. We run 24-7 air defense patrols. Because there aren't enough ground-based systems to repel mass attacks, we operate in uncovered areas. Here too, electronic warfare is a game-changer. Thanks to jamming, shaheds get lost across Ukraine's skies, sometimes even turn around and fly back, without needing a missile to take them down. But F-16s don't just jam, they hit. This fighter can carry about 10 different air-to-air -air missile types. That's one of its biggest strengths. In total, it has nine hardpoints, one under the fuselage, six under the wings, and two on the wingtips. We've already shown the fully loaded F-16V before. But those look very different from the ones Ukraine is flying. Not all hardpoints on Ukraine's F-16s are wired to carry air-to-air -air missiles. Only six of them are. Four under the wings, and two on the tips. C'est la vie, as the French say. And yes, we'll be talking about them a bit later. The Ukrainian F-16s we've seen in media so far carry two main missile types. The AM-120 AMRAM, a radar-guided medium-range missile and the AM-9 Sidewinder, an infrared-guided short-range missile. How effective are they? Over 80% of the missiles we fire reach and destroy their targets. Look closely. This F-16 only has one AIM-9 left under its wing. That likely means the other five already found their mark. And it's very possible that Ukraine is using even more advanced air-to-air -air missiles. Which ones? That's classified and depends on US political decisions. But when it comes to F-16s going head-to-head -head with Russian jets, here's what you need to know. No. At some points, we're coming very, very close. Your subscription tells YouTube our channel is worth watching. Tap subscribe to support us. It's like a high-level chess match. Two grandmasters who know every move waiting for the other to slip up. From their actions, it's clear they understand our weapon capabilities very well. They know when to move in and when to back off, and so do we. 
That's why pilots on both sides try to keep their distance. Modern fighters have powerful radars and long-range missiles. They can shoot each other down from dozens of kilometers away. A pilot's skill is all about timing, knowing exactly when to fire that one deadly shot. But taking out a Russian jet isn't easy. Those pilots are trained, and more importantly, they're scared too. There's a real person sitting in that enemy jet, and they don't want to die either. So, classic dogfights, where pilots can literally see each other through the acrylic canopy, are extremely rare. But that doesn't mean it's a relaxing job. On every mission, Ukrainian jets are in the crosshairs of Russian SAM systems. And getting chased by a surface-to-air missile? Yeah, that's stressful. The danger doesn't stop in the sky. Air bases are regular targets, but we're on combat alert from designated and backup airfields. That network is now very well developed. Ukrainian pilots almost never take off and land at the same base. The Ukrainian Air Force uses a tactic from Western doctrine called ACE, Agile Combat Employment. Early warnings of Russian missile strikes give them time to launch and disperse aircraft across remote airfields. Still, at least one close quarters air battle did happen over Ukraine. It was on day one of the full-scale invasion, when Ukraine's air defense was partly destroyed and nearly completely disorganized. Over Kyiv, Russian Sujets clashed with Ukrainian MiG-29s. The full pilot account and footage from that dogfight are in our other video, MiG-29 vs. Su-34. But now, it's time to talk offensive missions for Ukraine's F-16s. When you hear that an air raid alert's been triggered somewhere in Russia, it's not just because a few drones are buzzing around. That's part of a well-coordinated operation. Almost every mission over Ukraine involves a full team effort, people, aircraft, and systems. One crew locks onto enemy air defenses or jams them with EW. Another group keeps Russian jets at bay. A third group strikes. F-16s can do all of it. Right now, we're only able to strike at tactical depth, but the effectiveness of those strikes is very high. It's basically surgical. We're like a scalpel. If needed, our bomb can fly straight through a small window. In military terms, the tactical zone usually means 20 to 30 kilometers deep. So, when this pilot talks about surgical strikes, he's likely referring to JDAMs, Joint Direct Attack Munitions, in 500, 1,000, or even 2,000 pound variants. These glide bombs have a range of about 15 to 28 miles, or he might mean JDAM-Rs, the extended range versions which can reach targets up to 45 miles, keeping the jet safely outside enemy air defenses. Another possibility is the GBU-39, also known as the SDB, small diameter bomb. With a maximum range of around 68 miles when dropped from high altitude, it deploys folding wings mid-flight to glide toward its target. Ukraine's been using these kinds of American glide bombs for a while. They were integrated with MiG-29s and Su-27s, as early as winter 2022 to 2023. But on the F-16, these bombs are even more effective. Thanks to full targeting system integration and the ability to reprogram strike coordinates mid-mission, along with bombs, Ukraine's MiG-29s and Su-27s can also fire U.S. anti-radiation missiles. Meanwhile, the Su-24 has been paired with long-range Storm Shadow and Scalp EG missiles, and the Russians absolutely hate those. The Su-25? It's been successfully matched with French AASM hammer bombs. We're constantly flying cover missions for our MiGs and Sukhois. Almost every day, we fly more than just one or two sorties. We carry out multiple strikes on enemy positions beyond the front line. To work around compatibility issues between NATO weapons and older Soviet airframes, Ukraine's developed some very creative solutions, including third-party interface systems. Integrating Western weapons isn't just about physical adapters. Each setup needs a unique technical approach. So yes, Ukraine's legacy jets are still doing most of the heavy lifting, but things are changing. We've now received a solid reinforcement in the form of French jets, and they're already helping us a lot. The first Mirage 2005 Fs arrived in Ukraine in February 2025. And surprisingly, they've been easier for Ukrainian pilots to master, especially those with time in MiG-29s or Su-27s. That might be thanks to some older French experience. Back in the early 2000s, France ran a three-month training program for German Luftwaffe pilots who previously flew Soviet MiG-29s. That transition worked. For the F-16, though, you can't prep a pilot that fast. One of the reasons Ukrainian pilots adapted to the Mirage so quickly 
is because its controls feel familiar. Like the MiG-29, the Mirage has a center stick positioned between the pilot's legs. The cockpit systems are also simpler than what you'd find in an F-16. There's just less electronics overall. Maintenance? It's more demanding than a Soviet MiG-29, but still way easier than a modern F-16. But don't let that simplicity fool you. The Mirage 2005F is not a second-rate fighter. On paper, its performance is close to the F-16 variant Ukraine is flying. The Falcon still wins on payload. It's a beast when it comes to weapons capacity. But in terms of agility, the Mirage is one of the most maneuverable jets in the world. In fact, there's a recorded training kill against an American F-22. Yeah, you heard that right. A Mirage beat a Raptor. Now, to be fair, that was a mock dogfight. The F-22 pilot let the Mirage slip behind and come into gun range. Probably part of a training scenario, but still, the footage is impressive. We haven't heard much yet from Ukrainian pilots about flying the Mirage. What we do know is that the French jets are already performing well in the brutal conditions of the war, including intercepting Russian cruise missiles. Seems like the Mirage deserves a closer look. Want us to do a full deep dive video on the 2005F, including insider info and what it's really doing in Ukraine? Or maybe you have another topic in mind? Drop your ideas below. We'll choose from the most liked ones.